This is the weekly sales meeting for October 9th, 2022. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic is get dirty, but stay clean. It is my belief that to lead anything, you have to be willing to take part in its creation, and you need to do so from the front of the line. There are others who will disagree, but I would refer to them as imposters. It is hard to teach people how to sell without having gone through the trials and pains of selling. To lead any team, but especially a team of sellers, we have to share the same ground, chew the same dirt, and get our hands as dirty as everyone else. It is only then that we can wash our hands and exclaim what the clean will look like. Those that want to preach from the corner office without the knowledge that only comes from field duty will have a hard time getting any followers. The writer George Orwell gave us literary genius metaphors like 1984 and Animal Farm. He juxtaposed being both a writer and a critic. Orwell wrote, To survive, it is often necessary to fight, and to fight, you have to get dirty yourself. The dirty end of the field is where your team will get inspired. They don't take kindly to corner office pontification. They dislike those who lack the skills to do, telling them what to do. You come off as disingenuous, having never done the job or experienced the pain. Many managers don't feel like field duty. They fear being labeled inferior or weak with their ability to work miracles. But the title of manager does not make you Merlin. You suffer the same probability and statistics as everyone else. You close at a marginally higher rate, but no one is 100%. No one. The art of doing is inspiring. It is also hard to argue with an active manager who will get as dirty as everyone else. Comedian Ben Stein says, jump into the middle of things, get your hands dirty, fall flat on your face, and then reach for the stars. As a manager, realize that it's okay for your team to see you fall flat. It proves that you're human, not a robot. What they are looking to see is how you respond to failure. Do you bounce right back as you tell them to? Do you have the amnesia we speak of in sales meetings? We must if we are to lead. If we shy away from activity for fear of appearing unable, we only prove what others are already thinking. That we are so far removed from the day-to-day activity of the job, we forgot how to do it, or we never knew at all. You can tell the difference between those that do and those that talk. The doers are active and the talkers are doing that mouth moving thing. Look at the desk of your manager. If it is super clean and super neat, they may not be the most active of leaders. Harold S. Janine, the former chairman of ITT, said, You can know a person by the kind of desk he keeps. If the president of a company has a clean desk, then it must be the executive vice president who's doing all the work. I may have 19 projects working at one time, and that is okay. Keep the method of organization that works best for you. Be consistent in how it runs, or it will run you. Keep getting dirty. Here is what getting dirty affords you, the ability to stay clean. By putting in the hard work, it is okay for you to say no to things that are too dirty to touch. The ugly deal that comes in at the last minute, the client that wants to nickel and dime you to death, you can say no to these things because you got dirty. You know the true value of what you do and what it is worth. You know the value of hard work and the reward of a job well done. If you only sit behind a desk, any deal looks good to you. When you build it and work for it with your own hands through your own effort, you will find it difficult to compromise principles and integrity to get a deal. In fact, you will work harder to ensure you have clean business transactions in the end. It was the Irish writer George Bernard Shaw who said I learned long ago never to wrestle with a pig. You get dirty and besides the pig likes it. When you work hard to make your business work for you, you can slaughter the pigs. Not literally, but figuratively. You don't have to play in the dirty end when you're willing to get dirty. You can fight for and get clean on most transactions. Sure, we all have some with a little hair on them, but less and less of those get through when you're willing to put in the extra effort to make sure it is clean. Some will take the easy way out. They will say yes to the first offer without the knowledge that comes from experience. That experience tells me, hold the clean line. That way, every transaction is honest, and you don't need a ledger to keep track of the corners cut. It saves you from going down this path the next time, as you may not remember what you agreed to, but your customer always will, and that will put you at a disadvantage. 
NFL tight end George Kittle is an all-pro tight end. He said if you put in the dirty work, if all you do is what you're asked on every single play, whether it's pass or run, the rest for us takes care of itself. The same can be said for sellers. Stop looking for the quick fix or the easy button. It is not there. Do the hard work at every step. Prospect and prospect some more. Cold call and cold call some more. Picture your competitor beating you to the first meeting with a new prospect. Let that be your motivation to do more. When you commit to do the dirty work, your job actually gets easier. You know you won't cut corners. You know you will only take good business. And that makes your job easier as it keeps your hands clean. Getting dirty is a figurative statement. It does not mean you have to go and roll around in the mud. Former baseball great Ricky Henderson said this, If my uniform doesn't get dirty, I haven't done anything in a baseball game. That means he put in all-out effort. And if you had ever seen Mr. Henderson play, you would agree that he went all-out on most plays, especially when he knew he had the advantage. We can do that too. We have the advantage when we prepare, when we become accustomed to getting dirty. If we have never done it, it puts us at a disadvantage. The prospect has the upper hand. We ceded that to him by not doing the heavy lifting required to be excellent at the job. When we know about the business sector, when we know about the market, when we know about the opportunities at hand, we should have no problem rolling up our sleeves and getting dirty. But if we've never done it, the mere thought of this kind of work can be intimidating. If you work at your craft to improve every day, getting dirty should be another aspect of the job. Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs fame says, I can say the willingness to get dirty has always defined us as a nation. It is a hallmark of hard work and hallmark of fun. And dirt is not the enemy. It is not the enemy. It is okay to work hard and getting good at what you do. It is okay to go into the field and make the call, see people, learn about them and understand their problems. We cannot very well do that hold up in an office Eight hours a day. We don't learn anything trying to stay clean in an antiseptic environment. The real answers can be found in field work. Get up out of your chair and go see people. Talk to them. See if you can help. Roll up your sleeves and get dirty. For those that are managers or aspire to be managers, this is how you get there. Through hard work and perseverance. By doing the little things in the trenches every day. The poet Robert Frost said by working faithfully eight hours a day, you may eventually get to be boss and work 12 hours a day. I once had a seller who I thought would make a great manager. He would always tell me, not for me, I don't want to take a pay cut. Fast forward 10 years, he is now a manager at another company. Congratulations, sir. You've gotten what you've wished for. You have more responsibility and the cut in pay. But it started with the willingness to go out into the field and get dirty. This is what gives us the backbone to stay clean. I have released a new book on leadership called You Can't Lead from the Back of the Room. It is available on Amazon.com, but also released as an audiobook for download on Audible. If you like what you've heard here today, please consider downloading one or two and send one to a friend. Go to cdmediaconsulting.com and follow the instructions to order.